golden gate glass uh, this is a, a brick size for ss2 and the topic on the board says weeds and weeds control it's a very simple topic and then we have heard of the word weeds before we want to look at it critically as it pertains to agriculture to crop husbandry or, or what we, uh, we put it agronomy let's look at the definition see what are weeds? See, these are plants growing where they are not wanted. Any particular plant you find in your farm that you, the farmer, did not plant can be regarded as weeds. And they are very they are common weeds we can find everywhere. See, let's look at some common weeds. There are so many weeds. But we'll look at some common weeds we can find around our vicinity and locality. Some of them include goat weed. Goat weed, Ageratum consilius, that is what goat weed. We have guinea grass, we have the botanical name called Panicum maximum. Now, if you observe, you observe to I underline the botanical names, that is, that is the standard way of writing botanical names. You have tridax, it is also, also called PWD weed. This word really means public works department, it's mostly seen along the road. Uh -huh. So it's called Tridas. It's called Tridas procubens. You have what you call Bahama grass. Most times people confuse Bahama grass for carpet grass. It's different. So Bahama grass is called what? Cidion dactylion. Then what you call broom weed. This one is the toughest kind of weed. It can survive in any kind of condition. Okay. Then we come to the next one, Bahama grass. This, this grass is mostly confused with carpet grass. There are, two, there are two different types of grasses. Bahama grass is separate or different from what carpet grass. Don't confuse them. So it's called Sindon dactylian. Then what we call broom weed. It's called cedar acuta. It's a very tough kind of weed that can survive in very difficult and dry terrain. Then up here, we have what we call the carpet grass. Anazopus compressus. This carpet grass is the kind of grass you mostly find you find growing, growing everywhere and it's mostly used in fields where, uh, where like football is being played. You have sensitive weed. Uh, normally in, in the local part they call it what they call what touch me. When you touch it, what it tends to fold the leaves. And it has what they call what small, small what spikes. It's called uh, mimosa budeca. Then we have spear grass. Spear grass here is called what imperatus rindica. They also have what they call bush marigold. And the botanical name is called Asperia africana. This one is very easy to, to take note of. When you look at it, it has beautiful colored gold yellow flowers. Then we come to this one. They have what they call calapo or what they call calapogonium musidius. This one is, a, is also a forage or a weed, but it is what leguminous in nature. They have what they call sedge, sedge plant. Most sedge plant looks like stubborn grass, but they're not stubborn grass. They are in their, in their own group of their own. Sedge plant, because Cy Cyprus what run to dotus. Then we have what we call wild amaranthus. It looks like the normal amaranthus people consume at home, but it's different. It is what? It is spiky in nature, and it's called amaranthus spinosus. That means it has spikes or spikes in it. They have another weed which we call pig weed. Pig weed is called what? Bovirus varia what? Diffuser. They will also have here, number 14, what called Centro. The name is called Centrosema probesis. This one is also another type of what weed, but it is also what it is there. It is leguminous in nature. Okay, now we have here on a, a subtopic here on that weeds. It's the effects of weeds on crops. Um, weeds have some effects on crops in the farm. But one, they say weeds compete with crops for space. You know, one, one, one characteristic of most weeds is that they are fast growing. So when you grow your crops, within a short time, some weeds that are in that, in that farm or plot grow faster and occupy space than supposedly meant for what the crops. Then number two, weeds compete with crops for nutrients. You know, when plants are planted, they absorb nutrients from the soil. Also, to the same weeds which are growing, they also absorb nutrients. And at most times, they absorb nutrients faster than the crops because they are fast growing and they, all, they grow rapidly. 
Then number three, weeds compete with crops for sunlight. Because of the fast growing nature of most weeds, they grow, they grow a larger and at times to cover or smoother the crops, the crop plants, and as such, hinders, uh, prevents crops from crops from getting sunlight, which also affects affects what uh, the making of their food through sunlight or through what we call photosynthesis. Then number five, weeds compete with crops for soil moisture. So because you know most uh, crops generally they absorb soil moisture from the soil with their roots. So because of the extensive nature of the roots or vigorous growth of, of, of weeds and their roots, that they tend to absorb more soil moisture than the crops that the farmer grow in the farm. So that's on that on that effect of weeds on crops. They absorb moisture faster than the crops. And number six, weeds compete with, with crops for soil air. Soil air is found between between the what the found in the soil. So because because, because the plants the weeds also grow faster or rapidly, they absorb more soil air than the crops itself. Then we'll move on to this side. We look at some economic importance of weeds generally. Then that means when we say economic importance, it means both the positive and the negative of as it were as may be. So weeds reduce crop yield because they are they, 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 they compete for space, nutrients, sunlight. Soil moisture, that means invariably they also do what? They also do what? Affects the yield of the crop invariably. I mean, the crop does not grow as well as it ought to be. Then, number two, it also reduces the quality in the sense that some of these weeds and some of the, some of, the, uh, some of these weeds mix up with the seeds or harvested products of crops and in such manner hinders or reduces the quality of such a what? Cross. Then it also there's also a reduction in farmers' income because if yield is affected, if quality is affected invariably, it also affects the income or what the farmer gets in return from the sales of such crops. Then number four, the cost of production is also increased because the farmer spends much more money, much money on getting of what herbicides of agrochemicals to control or kill weeds. And also to maybe to also control what we call a what pests. All of these are part of well, what increases the cost of production of the farm. Then we sell as alternative host of crop pests. What it means is that there are some weeds in the farm. The the when the particular crop a particular crop which that particular pest affects is not growing, they have to harbor such kind of what, such kind of what a pest. For example, we have amphids. Amphids, amphids are harbored by siam weed. It's a very common kind of weed in our farms. And uh, it, it harbors what uh, uh, amphids. A uh, siam weed harbors what amphids. It serves as alternative host. Then, by the time you plant your crop like your cow pea, when it, it, it became fully established. This particular amphibian transfers from the siam weed to the cowpea. So you see the problem there. So it costs the farm so much money to control what? Pests. Especially when we serve as alternative hosts. Then number six, some weeds also harbor predators of fish, e.g. water hyacinth. So these are some of the economic importance of what weeds. And we we'll continue our characteristics of weeds. Now, what makes weeds what they are? One, rapid seedling, seedling growth, and they start with weed. I mean, weeds grow extremely fast and rapidly, more than other crops, and they get easily what established. That that means the edge over other crops. Then two, high seed output. That means what the the number of seeds you can get from what from a weeds are, is very high. And they are what effectively what dispersed too. Then three, uh, weeds also have the ability to survive under extreme environmental condition. Example, we have some weeds like what, like e.g., you have a, you have weeds like what cedar acuta, which is called blue weed. You can see it growing on a mess slab, under a slab, concrete slab. 
So some weeds can survive in extreme environmental condition, which other uh, normal crops cannot survive. Therefore, efficient dispersal work mechanism, either by air, so where, where uh, weeds can be dispersed by air, by water, or by attaching themselves to what? To even other animals. So they have efficient dispersal mechanism, or even by explosive mechanism, they have three ways they are dispersed. So it is very efficient in their dispersal method. Then five, high regenerative ability. When you when you when you when you clear your farm or you weed your farm within a short time, you see that the weeds what they regrow back easily or quickly. That means they have high regenerative what ability. Then number six, weeds. Weed seeds have long dormancy period. That means what? Then if conditions are so bad, like in, in drought situation, where there's no water, no rain, the weeds, the, the seeds of weeds can survive in that harsh, difficult condition for a long time. And when they get a little, a little a few drops of, of moisture, they regrow. Whereas other crop plants may not survive. This long period of dormancy, the seeds may what may what become what unviable. That means these seeds of weeds are viable even if, when, they, when they remain dormant for a long time, unlike the seeds of most crop plants. Then quickly, we come to the next one, which is called what? Uses of weeds. We said, what are you now? Weeds, we know that what? It's not a friend of the farmer, but they also have some uses there too. Some of the uses include some grasses are used to feed livestock, e.g. goat, sheep, and cattle. Like centrosema, like carpet grass, like guinea grass. These are examples of what of grasses or weeds that are used to feed what farm animals. Then two, another use of what weeds are what some weeds serve as food for man, e.g. water leaf. Water leaf is a weed, but it serves as food for man. Then three, it is used as cover crop. Now cover crop means that what you have a large area of land exposed to erosion either to wind or air erosion, then you have the weeds can grow and cover such expanse of land to prevent erosion. And example of some weeds that can be used to as cover crops include what centrosema purera. These are examples of weeds that can grow and cover an area of land to prevent erosion, either by water or by air, as the case may be. Then number four, we also have some weeds that are leguminous and these weeds can fix atmospheric nitrogen in the soil, e.g. centrosema. Centrosema is a leguminous weed. Calopogonium is also another example of a leguminous weed, so they can help to what? Fix nitrogen, convert atmospheric nitrogen and fix it in the soil. And the last point is what? Some weeds can be used to prepare compost and green manure. When you gather compost with uh, compost, when you gather when you gather weeds mixed up with what with urine and the dung of farm animals in a pit or in a heap, and, and they are allowed to what decay or decompose, it forms a compost manure. Then also too, when a piece of land is covered with what weeds. And the such weeds are worked in to the soil, and that's what I want to call compost a green manure. So that some weeds can be used as compost manure, and others can be used as green manure. Also, weeds can be used to prepare herbal remedies to cure different kinds of ailments. So these are some of the uses of weeds.